Exchange transfusion is a life-saving procedure where we systematically remove a neonate's blood while simultaneously replacing it with donor blood. It is like a medical superhero move, swapping out harmful substances in the baby's blood like bilirubin, toxins or abnormal cells with healthy donor blood. This procedure literally gives the newborn a fresh start by removing harmful substances while providing healthy, compatible blood components. Before beginning this intricate procedure, meticulous preparation is essential. We first ensure the baby is stable with continuous monitoring of vital signs, temperature regulation, and respiratory support if needed. Before performing an umbilical vein catheterization for exchange transfusion, proper local anesthesia of the umbilicus is essential to minimize discomfort and movement in the neonate. The area around the umbilical stump is richly supplied by small sensory nerves. After waiting a minute or two for the effect, you'll notice the area becomes blanched and the infant remains calm when touched. These are signs that the situs will anesthetize and ready for the procedure. Once the umbilicus is anesthetized and cleaned, the next step is to gently introduce the umbilical vein catheter. Begin by identifying the umbilical vein, which is usually the thin walled single large vessel located at the 12 o'clock position among the smaller thick walled arteries. Carefully insert the catheter into the vein until you meet slight resistance. Then gently advance it further, about 5 to 7 cm, until you are just past the ductus venesus and in the inferior vena cava. But be careful, avoid force. If resistance increases, withdraw slightly and adjust your angle, rather than pushing. We can easily aspirate the free blood when the catheter is properly in place. Once proper placement is confirmed by blood return, secure the catheter and connect it to the exchange transfusion setup. After successful placement of the umbilical vein catheter, it's time to create a safe and controlled system for the exchange transfusion by using a three-way connector. The three-way stopcock acts like a central control hub that allows you to alternately withdraw the baby's blood and infuse donor blood without repeatedly disconnecting lines. One part of the connector is attached securely to the umbilical vein catheter that ensures there is no air entry. The second port is connected to a waste bag containing the baby's toxic blood. And the third port connects to the donor bloodline, which is pre-warm and ready for infusion. By rotating the stopcock, you can easily alternate between removing and replacing blood while keeping the system closed and sterile. Think of it as a small but powerful trophy controller that directs blood flow safely and efficiently during this life-saving procedure. The actual exchange transfusion follows a precise push-pull technique performed with meticulous attention to timing and volume. We work in a small alley coats, typically 10 to 15 milliliters at a time for term infants or even a smaller volumes for premature babies. The process begins by withdrawing a calculated amount of the baby's blood then pushing it out to the waste bag 
then immediately by infusing an equal volume of donor blood. This cycle continues rhythmically. The donor blood must be carefully selected. It should be fresh, means less than 5 days old, cross matched with both mother and baby, and warm to body temperature. We calculate the exchange value, typically using twice the baby's blood value, approximately 160 to 180 milliliter per kg. That ensures we can effectively remove the majority of the infant's original blood. Throughout the procedure, we maintain detailed records of volumes in and out, ensuring perfect balance. The entire process typically takes one to two hours, during which the baby receives continuous monitoring of heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, and oxygen saturation. The reason we are performing exchange transfusion in this newborn is severe jaundice. Severe hyperbilirubinemia can cause kernicterus, or a devastating form of brain damage, if it remains untreated. Exchange transfusion requires vigilant monitoring for potential complications that can arise during or after the procedure. Cardiovascular instability is perhaps the most immediate concern as rapid volume change can stress the newborn's delicate circulatory system. We watch for signs of fluid overload, heart failure, or dangerous arrhythmias that might require immediate intervention. In an exchange transfusion, the push will cycle alternately with driving the baby's blood and infusing donor blood is repeated until the entire circulated blood volume has been exchanged, usually twice the infant's blood volume. In this newborn, we had to repeat the cycle 34 times, and it took 3 hours to finally be done. After completing the exchange transfusion, our focus shifts to stabilization and monitoring for delayed complications. We continue frequent vital sign assessments and laboratory monitoring, particularly checking bilirubin levels to ensure the procedure achieves its intended goal. The baby typically shows improvement in color and overall appearance as the elevated bilirubin level drops significantly. After the exchange transfusion is completed and the umbilical catheter is carefully removed, we protect the site by using vaselinated gauze to promote healing and prevent infection. Take a small piece of sterile vaselinated gauze, which is soft and non-adherent, and place it directly over the umbilical stump. This type of dressing keeps the area moist, prevents the gauze from sticking to the delicate tissue, and creates a protective barrier against air and bacteria. Finally, cover it with a dry sterile gauze pad and secure it lightly with adhesive tape or a soft bandage. This combination keeps the umbilicus clean, comfortable, and shielded like wrapping the baby's lifeline in a gentle sterile blanket to let it heal safely after doing its important job.